Hey guys, it's Abby. Let's talk about sugar. It's in almost everything we eat. For those of us who eat breakfast, it was in the cereal we ate, or the fruits, or the yogurt, or that granola bar. And if you're feeling extra fancy, it was most definitely in that pancake or waffle. Now, let's look at lunch. Wanna eat pasta? Sugar. How about a burger? Sugar. A salad? Sugar. And the list goes on and on. But if you're like me, you don't really keep track of how much sugar you're intaking. And that's normally because we don't have to. If I'm completely honest, I know how much sugar goes into a can of Coke, but that doesn't stop me from indulging myself. But let's think of it through the eyes of someone who has diabetes. Drinking of can of Coke can cause dizziness or lightheadedness and can eventually lead to future health problems. About 26.8 million Americans are diagnosed with diabetes, which occurs when your blood glucose levels, also known as your blood sugar, is too high. So let's break it down. Whenever you eat a meal, the food is broken down into a sugar called glucose through your chewing, saliva, and digestion. And this sugar is released into your bloodstream. Your brain senses a rise in blood sugar and signals your pancreas to release a hormone called insulin. Insulin will then act as a key to allow the body to use blood sugar as a source of energy. But if you have diabetes, your body either can't produce enough insulin or can't use insulin as well as it should. So the blood sugar stays in your bloodstream and over time, it can cause a variety of health issues, including heart disease, vision loss, kidney failure, and more. As you might know, there are two types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 diabetes is currently thought to be caused by an autoimmune reaction, which means the body attacks itself. Who are you? What do you mean? I'm you. No, I would know. Imposter! In this case, the body destroys your beta cells, and this stops the production of insulin. Only about 5-10% to of people with diabetes have type 1, and symptoms develop fairly quickly and can be diagnosed in children, teenagers, or young adults. Currently, there's no preventative treatments or cures, only insulin, supplements, injections, or pumps that patients have to use throughout their lives. Type 2 diabetes occurs when the body doesn't use the insulin it produces efficiently. About 90 to 95% of people with diabetes have type 2, and it develops over many years. It's usually diagnosed in adults, but the number of children, teenagers, and young adults diagnosed with type 2 diabetes is slowly rising. Unlike type 1 diabetes, type 2 can be prevented and treated with healthy lifestyle changes. This includes eating healthy and being active. For patients with diabetes, they actively have to avoid sugar-sweetened beverages, trans fats, high-carb foods, and anything with a high content of sugar. And as you might have realized, diabetes is an extremely tiring condition. And especially for those with type 1 diabetes, sometimes it feels like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. But recently, there have been advancements made in regenerative medicine that show a lot of promise in combating this condition specifically the regeneration of beta cells. And if you don't know what regenerative medicine is, click the link in the bio to my article that explains the basics of it. But hey, Abby, what even are beta cells? Well, beta cells are cells that produce and secrete the hormone insulin, and this controls the level of glucose in your blood, aka your blood sugar. And beta cells are usually found in islet cells. Um... What are islet cells? Yes, so islet cells are a group of cells found in your pancreas, otherwise known as endocrine pancreas cells. And in islet cells, there are alpha, beta, and delta cells, and they all produce different types of hormones. However, as we know, in both types of diabetes, beta cells cannot produce enough insulin for our bodies to function normally. The regeneration of beta cells currently can occur in three different ways. First, the stimulation of existing beta cell replication. Second, conversion of other pancreatic cells into beta cells. And third, the conversion of stem cells into beta cells. But in this video, we're going to focus on the conversion of stem cells into beta cells. Hey, hi, I'm back. What exactly are stem cells? 
Stem cells are special human cells that are able to develop into many different cell types. This can range from muscle cells to brain cells. Think of it kind of like a baby, and when it grows up, it can go into many different kinds of occupations. But let's get down and dirty into the science behind this. So in this case, we would use pancreatic stem cells and differentiate or convert them into islet-like clusters, which as a result would produce insulin-producing beta cells. Scientists do this in four steps, endotherm formation, pancreas specification, endocrine specification, and finally, beta cell maturation. The differentiation of the definitive endotherm is the first step in generating pancreatic endocrine cells. The definitive endotherm is generated in vivo by the process of gastrulation, where naive cells are instructed to form the three primary germ layers, the ectotherm, mesoderm, and endotherm. This involves the nodal signaling pathway. Nodal is a TGF beta ligand whose activity initiates a series of downstream signaling events that accumulates in the activation of an evolutionary conserved transcriptional network that regulates the definitive endotherm development. The next stages of pancreas development involve the proliferation of pancreatic progenitors and their segregation into exocrine and endocrine cell types. The expansion of pancreatic progenitor cells involves the FGF10 signaling pathway, and the decision to become an endocrine and exocrine cell requires the notch signaling pathway as well. And one of the final stages of pancreas development involves the maturation of endocrine progenitors into mature hormone-producing cells. However, in vitro attempts to differentiate pancreatic endocrine cells into glucose-responsive insulin-secreting cells have had mixed success in part due to the lack of understanding the signaling pathways that direct beta cell maturation in vivo. But in a UCSF study, researchers allowed the beta cells to grow within an islet-like cluster. The lab-grown beta cells began to fully mature and responded very well to blood sugar. They then transplanted these islets into mice and found that they were functional within days. And since on average, mice and humans are about 85% identical, things are looking up for those with diabetes. And guess what? This is not even the only process that scientists are researching for potential cures to diabetes. So look out for new videos on the stimulation of existing beta cell replication and the conversion of other pancreatic cells into beta cells. See you next time.